Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a thin crowd tonight. Uh, no waving flags. No, hopefully, no blood spilled on the floor. Uh, might be one of those ho hum meetings. But we're about ready to start. We've got a quorum. Uh, three of our worthies are here. Uh, Brian, I guess, his, was he going to be here? We hadn't heard anything that he wouldn't, okay. so I assume he will be. So, he's, uh, Mr. Kronquist is excused, uh, absent, uh, family uh, difficulty. And so, let's just go to work. It's 7 o'clock. And would everyone join me in a flag salute, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Ah, thank you. Uh, let's see, I kind of did a half a roll call. Um, our public works director is not, ab not here tonight. Mr. K just, just came. Kane. Mr. K, Prone Twist. K. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I just received a message from uh, Councillor Quigley and he will not make tonight's meeting. Okay, so Councillor Quigley's excused absent. All right. And Councillor Cronquist is here. Okay. Let's see. Um, are there any additions to the agenda tonight? Uh, if none, any declarations of ex-party contact, conflicts of interest, bias, anything else? No? Okay. Presentations, comments from the public? Anyone? I have no green slips tonight, but that usually doesn't slow some of them down. So, anyone? If not, let's go to the consent agenda. October 1st, 2018 City Council Minutes. I move we approve as written, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Is there a second, please? A motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second now to approve the City Council minutes on the consent agenda. Is there anything else there? If not, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, we'll declare the motion passed and the consent agenda past and part of the public record. There are no public hearings tonight. There's no unfinished business. New business is an under, oh geez, intergovernmental agreement for a bus shelter. Uh, Mr. Campbell, a staff report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. In your packet is a staff report um, regarding a proposed intergovernmental agreement between the city and um, CARTS. And it, here is a representative from CARTS, Ted Stonecliff. So I'll do you oh, want to go ahead and sure. okay go ahead please thank you uh, as Keith said my name is Ted Stonecliff I'm a planner for chariots we operate the chariots regional bus system uh, in Marion and Polk counties and we're here to request the city to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Salem area mass transit district which owns and operates the Chariots system in Salem and also the regional networks in Marion and Polk counties. A um, little bit of history about our service. Uh, we were CARTS until about a year and a half ago. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Before that, uh, we were called Wheels. Uh, we rebranded to Chariots Regional uh, so that people would recognize that it's part of the chariot system about a year and a half ago. And Staten uh, has been a good partner with us. Uh, we have been serving your community for at least 17 or 18 years. And uh, our most popular stop is on First Street. Right now it's located right in front of Safeway, but we're looking for a location where we can place a transit shelter where people can wait to get on the bus. Uh, we've had some issues with local property owners, uh, trespass uh, problems at the bus stop. So uh, our 
idea and proposal is to move the stop to the public works building just a couple of blocks to the north on first street and there uh, we have about 15 to 20 riders per day getting on at that stop, uh, so it's it's fairly popular. Uh, we we would also move the the stop that would be going towards Mill City and Gates uh, in that general vicinity. Um, uh, so let me tell you about about the IGA. Uh, in general, we have agreements with all of our rural entities that uh, we have a shelter located there. Uh, we just don't have the resources to have our own maintenance staff go out and maintain those shelters. And therefore, we ask the cities to uh, clean them up. And if there's any damage, that would be repaired as well. Uh, we pay for the installation of the shelter. Uh, it's just an ongoing uh, burden for you, but it's really a, uh, a benefit for all of your citizens. It is public transportation, open to everybody. And uh, with the uh, coming of new funding in 2019, we will be implementing Saturday service. Uh, so that's a, a benefit to everybody in Marion and Polk counties as well. Uh, are there any questions that I could answer? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> what, what's it cost to ride the bus to Salem? It's two twenty-five for adults, and if you qualify for our reduced rate, it's a dollar fifty. Okay. And there's how many trips a day? We have four round trips per day currently, and. That is set to increase with our uh, increased funding that's coming next year. Okay. But uh, probably one more trip, so a total of five round trips on the weekdays and uh, two or three trips on Saturdays. Okay. Uh, I see the bus stop about, oh, must be 8 o'clock or so down by the uh, Circle K on East Washington. Yes, is we, that, we have one of two what? stops in town. One two is stops. Okay. one is there on Washington Street, uh, and the other is on First Street. Correct. Okay. And then the other stops the transit center, the park and ride. Correct. Technically, that's outside yeah. of the city limits, so I wasn't including that. But you, you're absolutely right. Oh, they stop. They stop at that park and ride right up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. All right. And an expanded service to come. Yeah. As I said, Saturdays will be uh, something that we've never had before on the regional system, and we're really excited to roll that out. It won't happen until September of 2019. Uh, our funding just isn't coming until then. So, done any thinking about light rail? <laughs> that would be awesome. Mm, <laughs> not in the near future. No. <laughs> mm, okay, Mr. Mayor. It's a good. Yes. I have a question. Certainly. So uh, with this shelter, with the building of the shelter, will that be the only um, transit stop in town that is uh, provide shelter from the rain? Yes, we did look into having one for the stop going towards Salem on Washington Street. However, with the current location, the, uh, the county uh, maintains Washington Street, as you probably know, mm -hmm. and uh, we weren't able to move the shelter out of the sight lines that would take it uh, to make it safe for those right turning cars uh, from those side streets. So, mm -hmm. uh, so during the, the worst of winter, do you expect the shelter on Washington, I, I mean, uh, yeah, on First, First Street to, uh, to grow? The amount of people that catch the bus there? <laughs> Possibly. Uh, it is a large shelter. They're 6 by 12 feet, and so a group of 10 would be able to congregate in there comfortably. But in general, we have maybe five or six people getting on with every trip, so yeah. we're not concerned about capacity. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh -huh. Any what, other questions, folks? Sure. What would the uh, estimated maintenance costs or problem? These are like the old TriMet shelters. Are you repurposing mm -hmm. those, I assume? Uh, no, these are shelters that uh, we had elsewhere in the system. I think this one might have been in Monmouth, to be honest, and we are uh, repurposing it here. Um, 
So uh, they are owned by the district. They have another 10 years or so left in their life, and then we would be looking to replace them. Um, but but that, that would be our expense. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you. And there aren't, okay, we can, there are several possibilities here. Approve the proposal, uh, pr approve it with changes, additions, modifications, reject the proposed, or take no action. Mm -hmm. What would you folks like to do? Mayor, I move we accept it as written. Okay. I'll second. I have a motion and a second to accept the proposal, an intergovernmental agreement between the city of and the Salem Mass Area, Salem Area Mass Transit District, thank you, for a proposed bus shelter at the City of State and Public Works located at 1820 North First Avenue. Is there any other discussion? Nope. Okay. Uh, Let's go ahead and go and vote on this. Um, and Alyssa, I think we'll spare you tonight and not have you poll the council on all these things. All in favor say aye, please. Aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, we'll declare the motion passed and we're gonna go ahead and sign that intergovernmental agreement and thank you for coming out tonight. And uh, yeah, these are good things. It, um, provides transportation for folks that might not be able to handily get back and forth, especially to Salem. And uh, more mass transit takes people out of cars. Yeah. Now think about light rail on your <laughs> way home. Or Hank's going to have a Humvee service. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's next? Um, reclassification of finance director, Mr. No, Campbell. No, Mr. Mayor, we have an item before that, actually. The award of the contract for consulting services. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, heck, ooh, missed one. That's what happens when you have these loosely run meetings. <laughs> I don't want Dan to miss out on his chance to talk. Award of a contract for consultant services for economic development strategies. Mr. Fleischman, thank you for being here this evening. My, my pleasure, thank you. So, uh, Mayor and Council, the issue before you is uh, whether to award a contract for consulting services uh, we have uh, a number of times discussed the issue of uh, hiring consultants to help the city uh, create some economic development strategies. Back in July, the city issued a request for proposal and we received uh, absolutely no response from those who received the RFP. Uh, in September, it was issued again. Um, and we received uh, one proposal from the Bridge Economic Development Group from Portland who will be working with two other consultants, uh, the McKenzie Group and Leland Consulting Group. Uh, staff has uh, reviewed the proposal. We are very comfortable with the services to be provided. We've contacted some references uh, and with that, uh, are recommending to award the contract to Bridge Economic Development. Hmm. Okay. I believe you've got a copy of their yeah. proposal yeah. in the uh, yeah. in the packet, as, as well as the staff report. Uh -huh. Dan, that's a fairly busy topic uh, in our small corner of the world. Uh, <coughs> active topic. Uh, these folks are going to just add to, uh, bring some some more light. Um, they will be more. they will be doing some analysis of our comparative advantages and disadvantages. They will be looking at our uh, land use regulations, our utility rate structure. Uh, the range of incentives that the city has in place and those that we may want to consider uh, to attract additional businesses. Um, it's been probably, it's close to 20 years since there's been a new building constructed in our industrial area. Uh, there's been, there is property that's been on the market at least for 15 years with that is still out there on the market. 
Um, so the question is what can we do to uh, attract some additional business and jobs and tax revenue to the city? Okay. And what is it that the, that the citizens of the city would like to see happen and are willing to do to, to attract the businesses we want? Again, Dan, do you see uh, this group, uh, you know, they, we don't know what, we know what they think they're going to do. Uh, do you see them incorporating some of the work that uh, these local, uh, local groups, those, let me say groups, there are more than one, uh, have done to encourage development and change and whatever downtown and in the just in the community yeah I mean the the, the groups I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to are revitalized downtown state and that's and, one and the chamber I'm okay. not quite sure who else is out there um, <laughs> um, but so. yes I see that that uh, both of those organizations will have an integral role to play uh, as we develop these strategies okay all right good um, you haven't. You're not aware of of Hank's uh, International Economic uh, <laughs> Development Group. No. Okay. Well, it's just being announced, so oh, I'm yeah. not surprised. He's looking for venture funding. I'm sorry, <laughs> Councilor Conquest, please. So I, I actually worked with these guys at CERD, uh, the Columbia or Clark County Economic Redevelopment, when I was at Riverview Bancorp, um, and I'm looking at their website now. It. It's $100,000 in their K, they're going to look at K, present us with KPIs, assess our community, try to attract private development, which we're all trying to do, um, write up ECDEV marketing, uh, attract restaurants, and facilitate speaking engagements. I mean, I know that Dan, this is not to do on you, but it is $100,000 or $98,000 and change of taxpayers' money. and. It's not my money or Hank's money or any of our money, unless it's Hank's company. Um, what do they bring to the table that RDS, the Chamber, um, Columbia Council on Governments, and others, uh, all these organizations we're with do? What is unique? What, what's, what's their unique? What's their elevator speech? I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it, but I'm not seeing any extra arrows in the quiver for the hundred thousand dollars. I know that we need to kickstart Wilco Road development, but you and I both know that the roadblocks of this town, I mean, Second and Florence can't be solved by these guys, things like that. I mean, the, the, the Porter Lau building can't be fixed by these guys. Um, what, what extra oomph do they bring to us for the money? Good question. Con contrary to what you described the role they would be playing, they will not be hired to attract businesses or call restaurants. They are being hired to assist the community establish a vision and strategies for achieving that vision for what we want to see for economic development activity here in the city. So they're not being hired to be the city's economic development arm or business attractor they're being hired to help us figure out what we what we want to do and what we're willing to do in order to uh, get additional business activity here in the city mm -hmm. so what they will be bringing to the table is the expertise in looking at the the businesses and the industries that are here at the labor force uh, information that is available for the community and the area. Uh, as I said earlier, what are comparative advantages and disadvantages for, for different industrial sectors may be so that we, if we want to be, if the city says we want to be marketing the city, which the city hasn't done, that we know who to be targeting. Um, and we'll be looking at our land use regulations, our utility rate structures, our public work standards, perhaps, uh, as to and be making recommendations for changes that will make the community more attractive to the types of businesses that we say we want to attract. Okay. Priscilla. So <laughs> I don't know if it's going to help it, you any, Mark, but I actually have been involved with 
another project very similar to this and it no, I'm not saying this is, but it became invaluable to us because it was a kind of a third party that was able to come in. The groups that we're talking about, RDS, the chamber, that this is this is somebody that, had, that can look at the big picture, our whole our whole town, mm -hmm. and and what what all is encompassing in it, right down to things like the utility rates and stuff like that, and to get that kind of a big picture um, information kind of laid out for you gives you such a much better foundation of where to go from there. Where do you build from there? Without having that big picture foundation, it's, it's really hard to set up a direction. Mm -hmm. You just say you have pieces. What we have right now, we have a lot of little pieces. I, I, we, yeah. we, I agree, yeah. we, we lack the goal. We, we lack that the overarching goal that Astoria had, but that was led by the chamber and then the private parties and then um, the council, everybody got on board, and that's how Astoria changed around. And Astoria had much the same situation we do with landlords who have owned properties for a long time who don't necessarily make keeping up the old state and shoe repair building or the border law building number one priority like it should be. And I don't, I mean, Dan, I know for a fact that after looking at 34 cities like ours for a lot of reasons, that our system dev charges are right down the middle. And, you know, do we need, I mean, if we want to goose the economic development thing, we can change our system development system dev charges. Um, but we're right in the middle of the pack as we are, and are we going to spend $100,000 to be told that, you know, the rivers and rec tourism for the canyon are great, our adjacency to 22 is great, um, we have a lot of land that's developable that's not in the urban growth boundary, um, that our streets are in okay repair. I mean, I don't know, and I'm looking at their site right now, what additional things they bring for the, the check. It's $100,000. That's a lot of money of the citizens that I'm going to have, somebody's going to ask me, why did you hire them? And I don't, right now can say that they're going to engage us and facilitate us and assess us and come up with some KPIs and do a SWOT. But, well, let's see. That, that, that is what they'll be doing as well as leading community discussions about what w types of business activity we want and what we don't want. Mm -hmm. but the same 12 of us will come to all those meetings that already come. <laughs> you know, how do they reach out and inspire more people? We don't know yet. Well, I know. That will be, be part of the discussion we have with them as we develop the scope of work beyond what was in the RFP and their, and their proposal. Because there are there are a, a couple of items that they talked about in their proposal that um, I want to discuss with them further that I haven't yet about um, really what um, level of detail that data analysis will be available and whether it will be useful to a community of this size or whether they'll just be looking at Marion County data, which you know. I, I don't see what we'll be serving, you know. So we may cut that out of the work plan once we have that discussion. Is it best to push us back for another meeting when we have those answers? I don't see any purpose in doing that because we'll we'll work out the, the work plan with them as we develop the contract. Okay. Mayor, I have a couple yes. questions. So Chris? this is, again, being relatively new to city council. So if I understand Councillor uh, Con Conquest correctly, he had a, a business relationship with them prior, this particular consulting firm? No, I was the vice president of marketing for a bank. Oh, but not this group. Not this, this, this group was one of the many, many people that were blown. Columbia River Economic Development Commission is the people that basically turned Van Tucky into Southwest Washington, Camas, Washougal, what you see today for development, right? But this was a small portion of that group. Okay. I was um, just, what concerned me was that if you have a business relationship with no, a I vendor no economic development. I, outside of city council, whether was, or not that's a conflict. That was well, well, well more than a decade ago. Okay. It was just an observation of what people bring to the table. You know, you look at their project schedule here, which is the next to the last page of the last page, you know, they're, they're going to manage the project, obviously. And they're going to assess us and come up with strategies, okay. They're going to draft a report, okay. They're going to do presentations, okay. 
they're going to write it out and then suggest color revisions. I mean, in eight weeks. The other question I have is: Have we? Just out of curiosity, and this is a little off topic from where we are right now, but um, did anybody go back to the ones that were interested but didn't submit an RFP to find out what it was about the um, RFP that they didn't, why they basically didn't respond? No, we have not done that. Okay. I'm just curious if it was, did we did we put the like what the budget was, what the anticipated budget was in the RFP? We did, we did not. not. Okay. So it could have been a range of this to that. After the first time with no responses, we, we reached out and looked for people that we could contact beyond just um, putting it out for, for, for bids. So I know Dan had created a list and we had we had contacted directly, correct, Dan? Certain yeah, and somehow somebody got in touch with me who operates a website where proposals like this are listed, and I think that generated some interest. Mm -hmm. And it was um, seven to nine people who said, I'm interested, send me the RFP. And so um, and, you know, an email went out to those seven or nine people saying here's the RFP it's the same as was issued in July but we've got new dates for, yeah. for replying and for getting the work done my my concern is like I'm on the fence because I hear what Mark is saying Mar Counselor Mark fine. Fine. <laughs> because uh, on one side you know I, I'm always concerned if there's only one person submitting you know a proposal because um, then you have to you don't get to look at the different options of price and scope and value um, but on the other side I don't necessarily want to turn away the opportunity to have somebody come in and look at our city and where we can do better in attracting business so you know there, there definitely seems to be right now in the climate and this is something beyond the city of Staten um, meet with regional city managers and it's a topic of discussion that's that's been um, ongoing um, and a concern and Midland Valley Cog has been working on this as well which is um, local entities in smaller cities are having a hard time right now getting any bidding contracts uh, Portland seems to be the area that the big focus is on and, and where the money's at right now and so um, you know we're not unique right now in this situation and it is sort of frustrating and, and we're not the only community but you know not seeing more competitive bids because the market is such that they're just not outbidding for these projects so, um, Dan, me. Go, Mark, go ahead, and, or Priscilla, me. either one. <laughs> um, Dan, did you say when you had uh, when you first talked about this proposal that they had worked with another city? Bozeman. Uh, that that they had this group had done. I don't recall saying that, but they they worked with the county. The county commissioners just adopted a set of economic development strategies uh, within the past month or so and they were the consultants that helped develop Okay, that. what I was wondering was if it were would be possible to get someone that they've worked with before to show us what their end result report looked like to find out if it's just what you say, a bunch of stuff that we already know, or if it's actually uh, uh, some kind of um, deeper information again like I I'm I I also don't want to lose them if if we you know but because I think that the fact that they're willing to meet with people in the community and maybe get you know that that's kind of an ongoing thing is getting people interested in what's happening and and sh being able to share what they see as the vision of state and, and I and I value that and I think that that's a great part of this that I wouldn't want to to lose um, and I don't know how to how to find out how what their what their report what their end report is going to be like because if without that I I would I would still vote to to move forward right now that I, I think that this is something that we need and we need to move forward but it would be nice to have an, an actual report that they've done on another community to see what was in it who if I may ask mayor sorry who were the reference the references that they gave you were they other you said one was a county commission what one was Marion County uh, the other is the city of Bozeman Montana 
and the third is the Columbia River Economic Development Council, which is the Greater Vancouver, Washington. Okay. So they've worked with all three. Group so they're yes. Reference. Mark? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm just making a note that the proposal for services, what they're going to give us is two PAC meetings that they're going to prepare the presentation and agenda. One community open house where they prepare and present agenda. Up to five roundtable discussions where they'll facilitate. A community survey via uh, survey monkey. A summary. Uh, one planning commission presentation and one city council presentation. And that's what they're going to give us. And I know. It's on the next to last right. page of their proposal. Right. That, that, that is their response to, to task four of six, five, six tax tasks. They will also, if you look at the complete proposal, you'll see that they'll also be providing draft, a draft uh, economic development strategy, a draft transportation recommendations, utility recommendations, and then final reports as, as well as part of that. So it's not just, you know, you need to look at the entire proposal. Well, the other deliverables are final economic development strategies, right. Word document, and digital copy, final transportation analysis and memorandum, Word document, final utility <coughs> analysis, memorandum, and Word document. I mean, Dan, is it too simplistic to say that part of this would be putting some shine on the apple? Uh, yes, I think that would be too simplistic. I see that okay. the, 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 the two major valuable aspects of this project. One is, to, is facilitating the community discussion about what type of development we want to see okay. and what we don't. And, and also how to get there. And the other is the outside analysis that uh, would be looking at our, what are the advantages we have here, what are the what are the comparative disadvantages, and and what and from their perspective, what types of of business development are we likely to see, and how do we how do we facilitate that happening, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yes, I, I should note this is this was a council goal. This was a budgeted item in terms of the council goals. So it is up to the council. I mean, you know, this proposal is really trying to meet that, and, and you guys can decide how you want. Yeah. But I just want to say this is what brought this forward, and this is why we're having this discussion. None of us, I don't think, are opposed to economic development, doing anything possible to make this town a better town. I think that's a given. Well, we've also had. Every, every once in a while, from time to time, uh, just a comment, what do we want the community to look like, comes up. And it sort of hangs there. And then we go on to other things, but it keeps coming back up. With our planning, with uh, whatever, whatever else we do. Uh, what do we want the community to look like? And it's kind of in for a while at least, in our hands, and we're free to start to try to shape it or let it go. Been like this for 50 years. Hmm. Nothing wrong with it. Hmm. Just put those horses away at night. Chris. Mayor, uh, Council, just one more question. Um, it seems to me that the deliverables are also just an oversimplification of what it is that they have to provide, right? That's not yeah. the scope of work. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole lot of stuff, is my understanding, that they're going to be doing. The deliverables is just the documented things that they have to provide, like meetings. I mean, the meetings aren't the only things they're going to do. The report's not the only thing they're going to do. As I'm looking through this, there's meeting with business leaders, you know, transportation, gap analysis, that sort of stuff. So there's more to it than just the deliverables. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I think it's a good start for us. I think, it, as a matter of fact, it, it's a great start for us to, to, again, get that foundation that we can start building on to go from here. And I, and I also think it does meet our one of the goals that we came up with as a group mm -hmm. um, for this year. Sure. So we are confronted with a couple of options. Uh, 
One, to authorize the city manager to execute a contract with bridge development, economic development, or two, to direct staff to modify and reissue the RFP. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I'd like to ask that we move to authorize the city manager to execute a contract with bridge economic development for an amount not to exceed $98,615. Okay. I second. All right, a motion and a second to execute a to authorize the city manager to execute a contract with bridge development uh, for a for an amount not to exceed $98,615. Is there any discussion? Is there any way, Mr. Mayor, we could include in this authorization a requirement for them to provide to council more than just one presentation? Give us a roadmap on an ongoing basis of where they're going. I'm not quite sure what you mean by an ongoing basis because this is going to be a project that lasts only in 12 you know, weeks. A couple of, no, it's going to be more than 12 yeah, weeks. 12 weeks. 12 weeks. If you look at the project schedule, yeah. they're, they're, it, it'll be six months. If they but, a month, they could give us a, a, just a quick summary. And you can laugh, ma'am, but it's not, it's, the money doesn't belong to you. The money belongs to the people behind and around you. And when you're up here, if you're elected, People will ask you, why did you vote $100,000? And you need to ask that. And what I'm asking is, Dan, is there any way to ask these people to give us a summary at the six council meetings? So, a, a roadmap. I'll tell them how many, how this, why. So we can tell other people how we're spending their money wisely. So, Dan, you know, you said that you were going to meet with them about, a con about the contract and stuff. So I think that all Mark's yes. asking is to ask right. if they could, they could in include the um, council in, in more than just the one meeting. I think that that's a, an honest, that's an honest question, a reasonable question. It's certainly. reasonable, sure. And I, and and I don't think that anything stands on that. If they say no, our vote still stands. Well, stand, but, but my hope is right. that they respect. And I can, I can they include can mention of what of the the monthly progress in my monthly. Right. Staff yep. report yeah. to council. Let's do that. Okay. Get something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Are you folks ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Alyssa, would you go ahead and poll the council on this one, please? Sure. I was going to give you a break tonight, but it's all right. Councillor Mullen. Yes. Councillor Conquest. Yes. Councillor Usselman. Yes. Councillor Glidewell. Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Okay. Thank you, folks. And. Now we get to reclassification of finance director, Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as the council is aware, uh, this, the city had um, engaged McGrath Human Resources to do a comprehensive classification um, and wage study for the city. Um, we do anticipate um, with the new council in January, one of the very first items will be to discuss at length and to talk about the recommendations and um, to, to take a vision of, of what we want to take from that report or how we want to move forward from that report in terms of the recommendations. And, and we have bargaining with both our units coming up, both the police union and with, with AFSCME. So um, to have an understanding before we begin those bargainings um, you know, where we stand on, on some of these items. And so, uh, like I said, I think the first meeting in January will we'll really touch on this subject in, in more detail. What we're asking today is for one of the recommendations to be moved forward so we can move forward with looking to hire a full-time finance director, and that's to reclassify based off the recommendations from McGrath. So the information is in the council packet. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Administrator, what is the current salary for that position? It's located in the, the, the thing. Here somewhere here. It has the um, retirement eligible amounts from 5,949.47 per month to $7,593.20 per month. Um, it's recommended uh, to change range up to 6,684.87 to 8531.78. What is the current salary for that range right now? What's the first? 5,900. It's in your uh, the fiscal is. impact. 5,949.47 to, depending on the step, 7,593.20. Where does the incumbent stand on that step? We don't currently have an incumbent on that step. Okay. Hmm. okay. The last person who held that position, what did what was the pay? I, I don't have that information. It would it would be in this pay range minus the cost of living. Oh, okay. So it was in it was yeah, okay, so it was in what the current Yeah, yeah it would be in the current yeah. range. Okay. What McGrath says um, said to us was that um, 
the salary was was well below market and we'd have a challenging time to recruit or hire anyone um, to meet the qualifications of the position which was what is bringing this forward and why we're asking to move forward now so we can begin the search for the finance director and get that position filled. Okay, oh, what, uh, okay. Who, right now, um, does that job description include preparing the budget? Because I know that's prepared by a third party at an additional expense right now? That would be, that would be correct. We currently don't have a finance director, so we, we have a, a consultant who's been helping with the finance aspects of it and helping us prepare our budget. So that would eliminate the need for a consultant to move this and to hire someone who would have a fiscal background and a budgetary background. And what did we pay last year for the consultant ballpark? Uh, it's less than this. I, I want to say it's right around 70000 per year. Well, that's fine. I mean, that, that, yeah. that gives a value to this person. That, yeah. that helps us all support the higher rate. This, uh, the starting rate here, the one being proposed, I, I don't know that you're going to get somebody to even start there. For that, that kind of a position, that's pretty low. This is what McGrath yeah. had recommended based off of theirs and the reclassification yeah. position. So steps. when you hire someone, is it ne negotiable with them then within the range where they start, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 So the $6,684.87 would be the low end uh, if the change is made yeah. tonight to the $8,531.78 would be the high end of the salary. I mean, that's, not including benefits. that's not even $40 an hour. This <laughs> I would I would say that there's job security and there are benefits and that can make it very very attractive a position well, but these days. But I don't know. I own a business. You try and hire somebody with um, yeah. even to enter your QuickBooks. Let me tell you what they want to charge you. No, somebody that's going to take on the finance of this is yeah. going is so if you get somebody qualified. Sixty six thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I, I, that's not what I'm seeing. But. Well, if we find that we're unable at this range, we can talk about what to do. <laughs> I think this okay, my point being is I don't think this is unreasonable, is my only point. I, we're all saying I guess. the same thing. I think this is great because it also gives us ownership where the person preparing the budget is here. It's not necessarily um, a budget from another city that's been adjusted. It reflects us, and I, let's, I'm well in favor of this. Okay, good. All right. Other discussions? Nope. Thoughts about it? Nope. Oh, uh, let's see. A recommendation is uh, either to a motion to approve the reclassification as presented, uh, follow, do so it moved. with following modifications, or no motion necessary. What would you like to Number do? Number one, please, sir. Okay. A motion to approve the reclassification as presented. Second. Okay. A motion and a second to go ahead with this. Any other discussion or thoughts? Okay. All right. Um, let's vote on this. This is a money issue, so let's, Alyssa, let's, let's do it right again, please. Sure. Councilor Cronquist? Aye. Councilor Glidewell? Yes. Councilor Usselman? Yep. Councilor Mullen? Yes. Motion passed 4 0. Okay, thank you. And let's go to staff and commission reports. Uh, Finance department report. This is probably from Cindy and Elizabeth and Randy, the accounting clerks and associate accountants. And and it looks as it like it looks. Mm -hmm. Mr. Administrator, I assume that the uh, decrease is due to the few people with payment extensions. Interrupted service, Correct. fewer. Thank you. Still one disconnected. Okay. Um, <coughs> delinquent notices sent out, 500. Wow. About the same number going to landlords? Yep. Just about the same. Can I have a quick question? Sure. So when the city is aware that a house is being lived in without electricity, are they paying attention to what's happening in the house as far as where the garbage is going, where the, uh, if there's children living in the home, uh, all of those issues, so. I, I don't know if I can know the specific example and Rich, I'm looking at you as well. I mean, we do have situations um, with various houses, including squatter situations, um, um, situations where um, 
young children are living there without proper water and, and heat, and those are issues that we deal with in, in various ways. And, and I know Rich is involved with that, and and um, other entities get involved as as well. Mm. I'm um, talking about this specific information. So since we have one house without electricity, is anybody aware of what the address that's, that's, of that house is and who's living in it? That, that's that's water. Oh, it's just water. Oh, that's right. Okay, well, but that's that's, that's still yeah water. Right? That that's still that that's still that would still be an issue, right? When they're brought to our attention, we do check into them. Uh, very rarely does the person have their water cut off for permanently. It's usually turned on fairly soon after okay. after that. Uh, if we're aware of them, we we do check in to find out what the situation is. If there's kids, or if if it's a landlord issue. Uh, then we we address it uh, the way we address the apartment right. complex. Right, or if there is some assistance and they're not aware of it. Correct. You know, we, we so, refer them. Right. Yeah. So it's possible that this one service still not disconnected in August and the one in September is not the same. Generally not. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. If it were though, someone would say something. Right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're usually in our office uh, fa fairly soon after if they're not able to get it and we right. direct them to uh, the appropriate uh, resources. Right. Same kinds of concerns apply when we're talking about power shutoffs. Um, I know one family that hasn't had any electricity since May and it's three adults. They're not not no children. Um, they keep up on the water bill, I guess. And we, as a part of a veterans organization, we've tried to help and and um, could not make much headway on it. Um, becomes really a pretty stiff penalty to go to run a power bill up and then uh, reconnect fees and whatnot. Um, the I don't know if they have power now. They the last time I saw them, they didn't, and it's October. The the um, federal um, low income energy assistance program money that comes out. I I used to manage that money in Lane County, and I I paid up to eight thousand dollars to get somebody back on out of that money. Wow. That there that money is available in this county. Well, and so they just need to hook up with the right. People so we, through we all pay it as part of our power bill through the leap program and Pacific Power also is that probably who it is Pacific Power actually every power company that we worked with was more than willing to if they if they knew that there was somebody working with the people to to work it out the elect, the electric bill was an easier thing to do than some other things well. so the low income energy assistance program again part of it may be the people that you're trying to help. And if they're if they are unable to follow through or to, to fill out forms and do stuff like that, then that becomes the issue. Not that there's isn't help out there for them, but the, their inability to access it, or they're not wanting to access it. Yeah. Then that's, that's very difficult. Yeah, so, it really yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. It was a, yeah. Okay. Um, Rich, police report. Okay. Mayor and Council, you have the statistical report for the month of September. Uh, numbers are in line with uh, where we'd expect them to be. Uh, I will let you know that uh, two weeks ago on Wednesday we had a, a Coffee with a Cop on National Coffee with a Cop Day uh, over at McDonald's. It was uh, well attended and uh, uh, and all those that attended seemed to have a, a good time enjoying interacting with the different officers. Those ten guys that hang out at McDonald's in the morning all wait for this all year long. You know that they yes. do. You know that some of them were at my house like right after that, let, letting me know that that they got their pictures taken again this year. Yes. <laughs> With the cops, they were so yep. excited. The guy with the red, white, and blue hat he came by me too. <laughs> okay, <laughs> excitement in a small town. Whoopee. Okay, thank you, Chief. Anything else? That's. That is it. Wildly exciting. Okay. Um, Public Works Director's report. Um, should we just read through that and yep. see what mm -hmm. see what it has to show? Okay. Okay. 
They stay busy, that's for sure. What's next? Planning development. Ah, oh, Mr. Fleischman's here tonight, so what's the good word? Well, you've got my uh, report for activities uh, last month. Um, we are uh, this close to being ready to announce the to uh, residents or owners of manufactured housing units in the city that do not own the land that the unit sits on that our housing rehabilitation grants will be available. We're waiting for final sign off on all of the environmental review and and other things. Um, and I also want to remind the council and those in the audience that this Wednesday evening in the library starting at 630 is a community open house on the update to the city's transportation system plan. Uh, the consultants that we've hired will be there with a presentation, staff will be there, and we're, the purpose is just to get feedback from the community on, on the assessment of the existing conditions and the projection for future conditions. Okay, so that's Wednesday at 7? That is Wednesday, this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. in the library I'll meeting room. Okay, 6.30. Dan, is that 5.30 or 6.30? Dan, is there a virtual version? Because I will be reading. There will be a. There is a website. The presentation will be up there. There is a. I believe there is a feedback it, form on it that around. the consultants have okay. done. And I thought it was six thirty, but we're, we're, we're checking. But but I was checking, and I couldn't get on the city's website sitting here. So hopefully, oh, someone yeah. who's so keep talking for a second. All right, five thirty. There we go. <laughs> we're, it is five thirty. My apologies. 5:30. 5.30, good. Yeah. Okay. What else I'm is, just go gonna what be else is going on Wednesday? Anyway, so it doesn't matter to me what time it's Something going. else is going on Wednesday. What is it? Is that, <laughs> that RDS? Library, they library have, board meeting. Yeah. Are they going to have candidates? No, there's a calendar. Uh, no. Library board that? meeting is... It's in my office. Yeah, yeah it's, it's in your yeah. office. Yeah. <laughs> you can all fit what in. is that? Well, th I appreciate your yield. Nothing else going on Wednesday evening? No. no. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, Library Director, Jana. Jana, how'd the sale do? The sale did very well. Um, the Mayor and Council, your, my report and my stats are, are in front of you. I would like to let you know that on November 3rd, which is the first Saturday in November, we're partnering with Marion County Environmental Services to do a craft and art supply swap so that people can bring their their craft supplies that are their extra things and get a voucher to come into the swap early and then we'll have it open to everybody after that. Do you know the store Scrap in Portland? I've heard of it. I don't know. Go so. there, it's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So. Questions for Jenna? Treat Bag Fun. Mm -hmm. October 31st. That's Halloween. It is. Whoopee! <laughs> Candy for adults? No? The can comes as the mayor. Can you get a piece of candy? Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm sure there's, the mayor could get a piece of candy be, at the library. There's got to be Halloween. something. That, some, something goes with this job. Whoopee. Okay, thank you, Jenna. Anything else? No? I guess not. Um, presentations, comments from the public. All right. Yes, ma'am, please. Page Hook Quail Run Avenue or 2088 Quail Run Avenue. Um, I want to encourage the council to read their packet prior to the meeting. Uh, a lot of the questions that were asked tonight, the answers were clearly stated in the packet. I'm talking about the um, RFP that was put through for um, the economic growth. Uh, it was a little bit frustrating to hear questions uh, that were in there and then um, statements made at the microphone that were untrue because they hadn't read the packet. Um, okay, I read the packet. So. <laughs> you want to talk about this page? No. Uh, I, let let her, her talk. talk. No, let her talk. Let her finish. I'll let you talk. Please, go ahead. I also want to encourage, this was my next thing I was going to say, which um, is, is perfect right now. Um, I want to encourage the council to also make sure that they remember that community members should be treated with, res with respect. Um, Especially, no, let her. especially 
saying things to them when they are not at a microphone and they do not have the ability to come up to the microphone because that is not the time for them to do that. So um, I am speaking to you, Councillor Cronquist. I, I am quite offended by the way that you uh, addressed me when I was not able to be at a microphone. Mr. Mayor, if I may respond. Well, it's actually comments from the public, but you can make a quick response, please. Ma'am, to sit in the audience and sigh and make facial gestures is not to respect your elected officials. You and I beg to differ on a lot of things. First of all, I do read these things. And secondly, as the mayor said, some of it did seem a lot like apple polishing. Thirdly, it's incumbent upon those who are elected to council to ask tough questions, not to be everybody's friend. I would appreciate respect from you as well. The only reason I responded to you is because you're like <laughs> and making noises like that. And you can review them on video and hear yourself. Um, so the respect thing goes both ways. The second thing is, if the RFP for $100,000 of community money is a lot of apple polishing, a final word document, come on, that's apple polishing. And to ask them to give us um, checkups, intermediate reports, is just being responsible. So in the future, when you're here, I appreciate all candidates being here. If you respect me, I will respect you equally. Okay. We choose to disagree, that's fine. I do read these things, and I do read their bios, and that's why their website was up. So I can tell you that restaurant attraction was one of their six okay. key points, key indicators, KPIs. Mark, Council, let's, let's not beat this to death. That's fine, thank you. Paige, thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Nobody? May yeah, I move we adjourn? Well, there's business from the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, 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 we can avoid putting Rich on the spot because before our next meeting is the K-9. Um, so I have the information up. The spaghetti dinner for the K-9 fundraisers is Friday, November 2nd um, from 5 to 7 p.m. So come and enjoy a delicious spaghetti dinner and help raise funds for the state and police department's K-9 drug uh, drug program, and that's at the State and United Methodist Church at 1450 Fern Ridge Road Southeast. Did I do a good job with that, Rich? Anything you want to add? Did an excellent job. So definitely uh, come well, out. It's is it a pet friendly event? It's a. That's uh, up to the church, but uh, da Dallas does. Uh, Dallas and Brody both uh, go to go to that event. So and it is a fun event. Chief, had you guys well ever? Attended. Chief, excuse me. Had you guys ever thought of of just having a um, a, a friendly dog mascot? Kind of thing, somebody like Gus. <laughs> Are you wanting to loves get rid everybody of Gus? and and, and <laughs> uniform and Gus's size. isn't isn't picky about who he, you know, <laughs> talks to. You know. So I I'd, I'd so, like to say something to you before ahead. you get done. Not about the spaghetti. When you're done with the spaghetti dinner thing. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Just want to remind people that the um, there's going to be another candidates forum tomorrow night at the Brown House. Um, I don't even remember the time, Paige. You know what? 630? 630. 6.30. 6.30. So I invite all of the people in the audience and all of the people up here that want to come to it to come. Okay, you've got a potential for a uh, quorum? Um, it's not something the city has been involved with um, like we were with the other ones, so it's not really, it's outside the scope where the city could be, be uh, concerned about a quorum. Let me respond to that for a minute. Uh, Priscilla, is is everyone invited to that? Uh-huh. Are all the candidates? Uh-huh. Hmm. Okay. Oh, you know what? I don't know. I don't. It's a council yeah. debate, not a mayoral debate. Oh, yeah. I have I have absolutely no okay. idea. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> That's good. See, I just start a answering for people. I have, I have nothing to do with setting this up. I know nothing okay. about it. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's not you, the mayors aren't going to be there? I, I The headline on the Brown House thing says a council debate. Oh, that's yeah, I, I don't well, know. Steve so there, so if I don't you weren't, know. In, if you weren't know. invited, that's then, what, hey, then well, I'm sure that it has nothing to do with the mayor. Well, the, uh, uh, that's, you know, that's where the voting is. That's where the focus really should be in these in this election, at least. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, d I, have, I just assumed yeah. it was everybody. Yeah. That well, was my assumption. Well, it's been a years. Well, that's all right. Obviously, my assumption it isn't much of a race. Exactly it's a, it's a pretty slow walk, not not race. 
Uh, I don't have anything else this evening. Uh, Chief isn't going to pick up on on uh, dog or Gus the friendly dog, so we'll let that one go. He can have these these cranky police dogs. Cranky? That beagle's adorable. Well, one of them isn't. Brody, which one is the? Which one doesn't like pe? He likes people. He doesn't like other dogs. Brody. That that would be Dallas. Dallas. Bro Bro Brody is actually is. Uh, uh, stay, stays to himself as well because when he's out of his uh, kennel, he's uh, all work. Uh, da Dallas comes out and meets and greets people and uh, does yeah. does a good job interacting with the public. So. You still need a dog that likes people and other dogs. I think just me. <laughs> Business from the council. Anything? Future agenda items, November 5, 2018, ordinance number 1019, downtown ordinances, public hearing. That looks like it's going to take up our meeting. So with that, it's 8 o'clock. Uh, if there's no objection and any more business, let's go home. Thank you.